A couple of very important concepts you need to understand as an options trader is standard deviation and expected move. And they go hand in hand, right? They, they're kind of a little bit of the same thing. Let's start with standard deviation. What does that mean when we talk about a one standard deviation move or a two standard deviation move? Well, if I go over to my web browser here, this is a bell curve. So standard deviation is often illustrated as a bell curve. And if I read a Wikipedia style definition of standard deviation, standard deviation, quote, measures how spread out numbers in a data set are from their average or their mean. So you've got the mean, right? This is the average. And then as you get further away from the average, right, the percentages get lower and lower. So when we're talking about the expected move of a stock or an ETF, right? The further or the bigger the move up and down, obviously the lower the percentage, the lower chance it has of making that move. And the way one standard deviation works is one standard deviation you can see is 34.1% up and 34.1% down from the mean. So overall, when we're talking about a, a one standard deviation strangle, well, we're going 34.1% up and 34.1% down for an expected probability on that trade of 68.2%. So if I go into the uh, options chain for a stock, let me go to Apple. So AAPL ticker symbol, and let's go to the 68 day cycle. And let's say I want to sell a one standard deviation strangle and one standard deviation I know gives me a 68% chance of winning. Well, I would go, uh, basically I would need to go about 16 deltas on each side. In this case, I have a 17 delta put, I don't have a 16. But on the other side, I have a 15 delta call close enough. Overall, I should have about a 68% chance of winning. I have a 72% pop on this trade, so a little greater than 68% chance. But that is your typical one standard deviation strangle. You go about 16 deltas on the put and the call, that gives you a 68% chance of winning, right? If you think about this, think about this being a bell curve because it's basically what I just did, right? This is the short put. This is the short call. I have a 68% chance of winning because it's going to finish inside that strangle 68% of the time. And then obviously if I have a 68% chance of winning, I have a 32% chance of losing where it goes below my short put or above my short call. So that is basically what you're looking at on the options chain here. And on a lot of options chains, including the one here inside Tasty Trade, they actually have lines. They have visual guide marks to help you. You see this dotted line here? That is the one standard deviation line, right? Because we have the at the money right here in that orange line. So if we go to the next group of lines, that's the one standard deviation lines. If you go even further, this line out here, that's the two standard deviation line. And on some things, they might even have a three standard deviation line way out on some products. But typically, you're only worried most of the time when trading options about one standard deviation and two standard deviation because anything past two standard deviations, we're dealing with such small percentages, you really don't ever worry about them. So if I go back to the bell curve here, this illustration, we have a 68% chance of winning on a one standard deviation move. If we go out to a two standard deviation strangle, which is selling somewhere around the two and a half delta on each side. So that's why we don't worry about like three standard deviations, four standard deviations, they become really why, but let's go about three deltas on each side for a, a two standard deviation strangle. So maybe I do the three delta put, the two delta call, that's about five deltas, that's about a two standard deviation kind of trade. I'm going to win about 95 and a half percent of the time is what a two standard deviation move is. You can see actually the pop on this particular trade I put on 96%. That is a two standard deviation strangle. So a really high probability chance of winning on a trade like that. If you go out to a three standard deviation kind of move, the chance of winning goes to like 99.7%. That's why you really Really don't worry about moves greater than two standard deviations because you start dealing with uh, basically they become extreme outlier events you know things that are very unlikely to happen now let's talk a little bit about expected move what is the expected move well let me move my head out of the way actually let me just switch to this view here the expected move on tasty trade can be found right here in the options chain so if you go into any options chain you have the IVX of that particular cycle and the plus minus and then a number that is the expected move. So if I go in the 68 day cycle, we have plus minus $20 and 42 cents. So the expected move is 
up and down $20.42. And you've got a brown ruler, a copper color ruler here on the options chain in Tasty. That's the expected move. The expected move, uh, basically, that is like a one standard deviation move. The stock should fall in this range 68% of the time. So really, expected move and one standard deviation are kind of the same thing. But you're like, well, DT, the one standard deviation lines are wider than the expected move, at least here on Apple, and this will change on some things. I don't know what Tasty is using to calculate the expected move uh, because it is a little different sometimes. Also, the one standard deviation lines are sometimes not that accurate. You can see this standard deviation line is actually uh, below the 15 delta. And remember, the one standard deviation line should be around a 16 delta. So sometimes they don't exactly match up. So how does knowing about standard deviation and expected move help me as an options trader? Well, I want to win on most of my trades. So knowing percentages is good, right? Knowing probabilities is good. So if I'm primarily doing things like selling strangles or selling iron condors, then I know I want to be at least at the expected move, if not outside the expected move, because I want to win, for example, me personally, I want to win on at least 70% of my trades, if not 80% or more of my trades. And right now they're calculating the expected move in Apple. Well, if we sell a strangle, let's go right to the outside of this copper ruler, which is the expected move, which is up or down $20.42. So let's go, in this case, sell a 20 delta put, the 24 delta call. Yeah, the pop is 65%, not quite 68, but you know we're not exactly at the expected move because it's $5 wide strikes. But if I wanted to, I can go a little wider on the call. That's 67%. So this is about a one standard deviation strangle. And so I'm gonna win basically two out of every three trades. If I just put on a strangle and let it go to expert which I never do, but if I traded that way, I know I'm going to win two out of every three trades just because of knowing what the expected move, what the one standard deviation move is. Another common way I use expected move is if I'm going to trade something for earnings, right? So let's imagine an earnings trade. I know as I'm recording this, I think, uh, does Nike have earnings coming up? Yeah, it has earnings coming up in a few days when I'm recording this. So what is the expected move for Nike's earnings? Well, I can see in the front month cycle here where it will report earnings during this five day cycle. It's got an expected move over that five days of about $5.30 up and down. So if I go to that cycle, yeah, up and down $5.30, right? So about a $10.60 range for the expected move. So I know that's what they're expecting. And let's imagine I want to sell a strangle in Nike. I wouldn't do it in the five-day cycle. I would go out to probably a 60-day cycle. That's typically where I live. And I know Nike's likely to make a $10 range as far as the expected move. That's 68% of the time it's going to fall in that $10 range. I want to win at least 80% of the time. I'm going to make sure that I'm at least $5.30 or more out of the money on each side of the strangle I sell, even in the 60-day cycle, because I know in the next few days it's likely to trade somewhere in that $10 to $11 range. And if I was a real scaredy cat, <laughs> some people calculate it, hey, I want to be twice the expected move. So if Nike is uh, expected to be up or down 530, then I want to be uh, $10 out of the money on each side. So if it's trading at 67 and a half, maybe I want to be at like 47 and a half on the puts and maybe uh, 87 and a half on the calls. It's a really wide strangle, three delta put, <laughs> eight delta call. But you know, some people do trade like that. I don't trade like that, I would be a little more aggressive. But you know, I still want to be well outside of the expected move for the earnings. So maybe I go a little bigger than the expected move. Because again, personally, it's, it's for me, it's all about winning most of my trades. It's all about probabilities. I just want to be somewhere around that 80% pop on most of my trades. I like winning about eight out of every 10 on my trades. Now, one other thing to talk about as far as expected move and standard deviation, if I go back to the options chain here for Nike, the expected move in this five-day cycle where it's reporting earnings is up or down $5.30. So what is a one standard deviation move in Nike? Well, it's up and down $5.30. That's the one standard deviation move. What would be a two standard deviation move? Well, it would be twice that. It would be up and down $10.60, right? What would be the three standard deviation? It would be 
three times, right? It would be three times the expected move. A four standard deviation move is four times the expected move. That's how they work. So, you know, it's really easy to calculate what a three or four or five standard deviation move is, even though they're very unlikely events. Remember, the three standard deviation move, that's, we're dealing with 99.7% of the time it falls within three standard deviations. So it's really rare to get anything greater than a three standard deviation move, but it does happen. I I've sold strangles, I've sold naked puts, naked calls on things before that made a four standard deviation or even a five standard deviation move before. Lost thousands of dollars on those trades. So, But again, I've made tens of thousands of options trades over the years. I can count on one hand, you know, the kinds of uh, underlines that made those kind of giant moves. But just because it's a very low chance of it happening doesn't mean it's impossible. They do sometimes happen. The main thing is make sure you're winning on most of your trades. Make sure you're collecting a lot of profits on all the trades that are winning so that occasional outlier loss doesn't blow up your account. Now, if you want to learn more about options trading, especially my favorite option strategy, which is the wheel option strategy, check out my book, The Super Wheel Option Strategy. This book is available on Amazon. You'll find a link in the description below. Peace, guys.